Well, friends, we're looking at the reign of Uzziah, and one of the things we can say about him, he had an exceptionally long reign. He started at age 16. It went on for 52 years. Imagine that. And uh, in general, good. Good king. Reign, he, he, uh, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, and he, he had a lot of achievements. So let's look at some of these achievements. First of all, um, he prospered militarily. And by the way, all this was happening when he was listening to the instruction of the voice of God through Zechariah. And he sought the Lord. So God made him prosper. And military uh, prosperity was a big part of it. So he was able to really have the upper hand over the Philistines, to several of their cities, broke down their walls, um, actually was able to build cit cities in their territories, uh, not just the Philistines, but other people groups as well. He became well known. His fame spread to the border of Egypt, which is a major empire, and he became very strong. He built towers. He built towers in Jerusalem and in, in other places. He had cisterns, by the way, for water. So that, that's a very important strategic advantage if you have water. And of course, you need food as well. And, and so he prospered militarily, but also in the land. He, he did great things with the land. He said he loved the soil. And so here, the, here was this man at, that did just amazing things in the hills and the fertile lands, making things grow. And uh, listen to this. Uh, not, not only did he have a lot of people who were mighty men, leaders and, and also soldiers, but he armed them well so that they had shields, they had spears, they had helmets, they had coats of mail, uh, they had bows and stones for slinging, and they had what uh, the Bible translates as machines that were invented by skillful men, like engineers. And these machines were put on towers to shoot arrows and great stones at any advancing enemy. Yeah, imagine that, that must have been such a shock for people to see these armaments. And his fame spread far. He was marvelously helped until he was strong. And this is often the test of character for a man. So you could be one way while you're weak, but when you get strong, then you get full of yourself potentially and you end up being pompous and, and going beyond what you're really supposed to do. And that happened, unfortunately, in the case of Isaiah. And the way it manifested itself was that Uzziah began to resent the fact that the priests could go into the house of the Lord and do certain things that he couldn't do. He couldn't do. For instance, he was not allowed to burn incense. Only the sons of Aaron in the tribe of Levi were allowed to burn incense because they were the only Levitical priests. Now, of course, Uzziah is a king. He's not from the tribe of Levi at all. He's certainly not a son of Aaron. No, he's from the line of Judah, line of David within the tribe of Judah. And that's a great honor, and you should be very happy. He's king over Israel for 52 years. You know, what more do you want? No, he wants to be priest, too. They're, you know, when the great Messiah comes, he's prophet, priest, and king. But somebody who's uncomfortable is staying within his place, even though he's achieved great things, now he wants more. He wants to be priest. And so what happens is he goes into the temple in the house of the Lord against every rule of God and against the advice of others around him, trying to restrain him. They had 80 priests who go into the house of the Lord after Uzziah to try and get him out of there. And meanwhile, he's getting ready to burn incense. And they are speaking to him and they say, look, you're not allowed to do this. It's not your place, Uzziah. You have limits, Uzziah, even though you're a great king. But uh, what happens is leprosy right at that moment, breaks out on his forehead because he gets angry at what's happening and this leprosy breaks out. They have to get him out of the house of the Lord before he makes everything else unclean. And he's never able to go uh, into the house of the Lord again for the rest of his life till the day of his death. Now, here's the thing. I just want to make this connection. You, you think of Jesus in all his glory. You know, there he is. He's, he's risen from the dead, ascended into heaven. And you'd think, well, what's he going to be like in that ascended state? Is he still going to have the same character he had in his, in his uh, days of weakness upon this earth? And said, yeah, 
Absolutely, there was nothing lacking in his character in his ministry on earth, and there's nothing lacking in his character now as he has all power and authority and reigns from on high. And we're told this in the Bible, we're told he ever lives to intercede for us. There's a man of character. And we're also told that in heaven, that he shines not only as the lion of the tribe of Judah, but also as the lamb that was slain with wounds yet visible above. You know, there's our king. Father, thank you for the character of our Messiah King who rules and reigns and just in everything that he does is, is now glorious and entirely right. What a privilege to bow before him and before you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings now. Have a great day.